Aloha, my internet family. How are you? Welcome back to Practical Printing. And welcome to part 11 of our CME CNC Rostock Max V 3.2 build series. If you haven't been following along, I strongly suggest you pause it here, check out the link up in the corner, and go back and revisit the earlier videos so that you're on the same page as we are as far as where we're at in the build process. If you're not familiar with CME CNC's line of Delta printers, there's links in the description to, over to them as well. So without further ado, let's do it. Okay, so at the end of part 10, we had just finished installing the effector whip and securing it into the grommet at the top here to keep it from pulling tight. So we're going to start off now at step 38, and we're going to start wiring up the electronics to the Douay board. Now, we're not going to need a lot of parts for this. We're going to need the white connectors, the KK style connectors for the pins that are not terminated going to need a set of flush cuts and you're going to need the zip ties and cable capture doohickeys that are included in there. Now a quick note on the KK connectors. There's a bag that is included in a CME CNC package for the electronics. There is also a bag in the Duet and it's labeled Duet connectors. You want to be sure to use the white ones that came from CME CNC and set aside the beige ones in the bag labeled duet connectors and those will not be used. The reason is, is the pin size that was pre-crimped onto these cables matches up to the white connectors, not to the beige ones. All right, so let's get started. Okay, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take all of our wiring that we have coiled and we're going to pull it out and kind of fan it out at each axis or at each tower here so that nothing is tangled on it self and everything is separated. You want to do this gently, you don't want to just yank it out, but we do need to make sure that everything is separated here. Okay, those are all sorted out and we now have a nice clean work surface to work in. If you look in the manual at step 38, there's a picture of how everything is going to connect to the duet board. And that's going to be our reference for this. The next thing that we want to do is separate out our white connectors into the different sizes, whether it's a two, a three, or a four. Okay, and once we do that, we're going to grab the three, the three hole connectors. We're going to look at our end stops, and again, we want to make sure that there's no tangle in these at all, and inspect them to make sure there's nothing wrong. We're going to take our end stops like this, and we're just going to slide from the back side slide the connectors up into it. Now these are not polarity specific, so it doesn't matter which wire goes where. And you're just going to slide them in to the first and third position. And they will snap once you have them into place. Okay, that one's done. Let's do the X. And let's do our last tower here. Okay, now that those are in, we're going to Pull those out here towards the center 
like so. And we're going to attach them to the three end stop positions here as they are labeled on the picture. So our end stops we have are the three pins. So we have E1, E0, X, Y, and Z. E1, E0, X. So E1, E0, X, Y, and Z. So let's start with our X tower, which is here. And we're going to go ahead and just slide that on. Like so. Going to move to our Y tower. And we're going to go to our Z tower. Now it's important to get those onto the right connectors. Okay, you can now kind of pull these back together. loosely at this point and just put a zip tie on it. We're going to clean up our wiring more later, but for now we're just going to use zip ties to hold them down or into uh, into a bundle and out of the way. Okay, once we have the end stops done, then we're going to start working on the end of this whip here. There's two wires, a black and a red, that are not going to get terminated on here for now. So let's go ahead and pull those out so that they're not part of the tangled mess. And let's start separating these out. There's a direction, uh, another picture in here that's going to show us the colors. So the LED is the green wire two pin KK connector. So let's find our green. Okay, and that's going to go to our always on fan on the duet connector, two always on fans. So that are going to be these two. So we're going to take our green and go So go here to the outside one, snap that down. The hot end fan is going to be the purple one. So let's pull that back and get it, make sure it's not tangled up in this mess. Okay, so we're going to take our purple with our green. The purple is going to go to purple wire 2K. This is HE fan pin 2. Okay, so that's going to go to fan 2 on the duet. Okay, so that is labeled as 1. It's going to go. there. Orange wire is our next one to sort out, so let's pull that one out. Orange wire is our layer fan, so layer fan, position 2, position KK fan 0. That's going to go Here, the probe input on the duet, which is, survey says, probe. That is going to be right here. That guy is going to go there, and it'll snap in. Okay. And our last wire is the thermistor, which is the white one, which is going to go on our end stop thermistor here. Okay, we can now take this bundle 
and hold it back nicely like so. Stick another zip tie on that bundle to hold it nice and tight. And that finishes the probe set. Now we're going to go to the bed power thermistor, which is our white wire coming off of this guy over here. Over here off the Y tower. So that's going to need a two pin connector on the end. And again, that is not polarity sensitive. So we're just going to snap it in. One, here, click. Two, here, click. Okay, that's going to go there. And we're just going to pull that down underneath here like this. And I'm not going to wire tie that, but we'll pinch it over here for now. Okay, then we have the, the fan for the Douay fan, which is down here. Now, the manual says to crimp ends on it, but this one is already crimped. Now this one, we do need to be careful about what the orientation is of the black and the white. I'm sorry, the black and the red. So we're going to make sure that the, with this orientated this way, you follow along with the, the manual and get the red in the top slot. Black in the bottom like so and that is going to go on to this other fan connector over here like so and it looks like I got the coloring positions a little bit off on these. So let's reorder these here. Uh, let me pull these all back off because I was referencing it the wrong direction. Our plug is our reference. So I was looking at this the wrong way. This is why you double check everything before you plug it in or before you put power to it. I'm going to skip one, I'm going to go green, orange red black fan and then purple down here furthest away from the green connector so that was my mistake okay then we can move on to the motor connectors over here and the motor connectors we're going to reference again it's closest to the green power connector so it's going to be z Y and then X. So let's start with those. So this is our Z tower. And you want to make sure that the connectors are facing the proper direction with the red wire towards the front of the machine. So that's the front, so we're going to go with the red this way. Those take a little bit of effort to get them on because they're not the exact connectors for these. Okay, so there. And then we have our Y tower the red towards the front. I'm going to 
pull this power cord back out and down, and then we're going to plug in our Z. Put the red towards the front. Okay, so now is a good time to pause before we start doing power connectors and tidy up this mess. All right, so let's uh, let's go ahead and I'll do that here in time lapse. Okay, we are all nice and cleaned up pretty for now. So our next step is going to be to start wiring in some of the power. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so two tools that I did not mention that we were going to need earlier are a set of wire strippers and a small flat bladed screwdriver. What we're gonna do here is we have the black wire the red wire out of the Z tower and the black wire out of the X tower, which is this one here. And we're going to go ahead and pull these around and try to get our lengths of these some, somewhat similar, at least for the red and the black. So those are going to go to here. So I'm going to leave the black the length that it is, and I'm going to cut the red off about there. I'm going to set that aside. And we also have the black wire off of the whip. I'm just going to make sure that these are both coming underneath these other cables here, like so, so that they're not on top of anything. And this skinny black one, I'm not going to cut off even though there's extra room, I'm just gonna let that lay. That actually ends up needing to end up over here on this terminal block. So I'm gonna pull it around like so going to point it back underneath here, underneath the other wires. And it's there, so I'm going to leave it at length. That is already stripped at the end, so we're just going to pull it off. And that's going to go into the first terminal block. I need to walk around so I can see that. You get the backside view here for a second. We need to make sure this is open. I'm going to feed it in and tighten it up. While you do that, you want to kind of keep one finger on the terminal. You don't want it to wiggle, otherwise it will break loose. So you can hold it like that, or the manual suggests you may want to use pliers. I'm going to give it a tug test to make sure that it's in there good. Now, on these two, red and black, we're going to strip off about a quarter of an inch, or about six millimeters or so. Like that. One thing you do not want to do, and it's not mentioned in the manual or even suggested to do it in the manual, but one thing you do not want to do with these wires going into these Euroblock or Phoenix Block style uh, crimp downs is you do not want to um, tin your wires. A lot of people are tempted to tin these wires thinking it's going to get them to better. better. Problem is when you tin them, it doesn't allow it to squish properly and, and make full contact. So. Looking at our picture here, the black is going to go in this side. The 
red is going to go in this side. I'm going to make sure those are in all the way. I'm going to start to tighten them up just till I feel a little bit of resistance. And then I'm going to hold this again, just like we did the other one, to keep it from turning on the board, because you don't want it to break the solder joints loose that hold it to the board. And then you just want to double check all your wires that nothing is loose. Okay, you do have one black one here that is still loose coming out of your Y tower and you have the red one here. You're going to want to pull these between the frame, this one here that goes between the Y and the Z towers. So that would have mean that we actually wanted this cable to come out the other side of here, but instead I'm just going to loop it around the bottom going underneath these other ones because we do have the slack. So I don't have to try to pull that back through. And then we're going to take this red one. I'm going to also run it underneath these wires, but on top of the other 12 gauges. And we're going to leave that out the side. And I think that looks plenty clean inside there. Um, if you feel very anal and you want to, you can try to lace those up more. There's plenty of extra wire ties and the, uh, the lockdowns should you choose to, but in this case, the primary goal is just to make sure that you have good airflow across the board and that you're not blocking air, airflow to or from the board. So I think we are good like this. It, it's open enough that it's easy to get to the wiring. We have enough slack if we need to move anything around and it looks clean enough. Okay, that takes us to the end of step 45. We have now completed the wiring on the upper half onto the duet board for now. We will pick up on step 46 later where we start wiring to the fuse panels and finish up the upper section. But that about wraps up the bulk of it there. All right, so that's it for today on Practical Printing. Remember, if you like what we're doing, please feel free to subscribe, ring that bell so you're notified when the next segment of the video is out. Special thanks again to CME CNC for providing the Rostock Max V3.2 for me to build in this build series. And with that, I bid you aloha.